But then uh, the other side of it, you know, growing up in Komasdal and uh, the area I'm from, you know, um, was kind of rough, you know, the streets. And uh, my, my brothers and my uh, parents tried to keep me away from that. Sometimes they succeeded, sometimes mm -hmm. not. <laughs> 99 FM, it's Sibo and Mo in the morning. Well, the Mo to the Sibo is at an intersection at Marua Mall. Traffic lights giving out some hug and a mug and some inspiration and some joy. While I, on the other hand, have the pleasure and the joy also of having in studio our Royal Hustler, former footballer, coach, illustrious coach uh, at that, Ricardo Manetti. He made his senior national team debut at just the beautiful tender age of 17. He played professional football for 10 years, winning the league in two cups with Santos FC in Cape Town, South Africa. He was also part of the class of 98 that was responsible for Namibia's first, did I say first? Yes, I did. First AFCON qualifications and the only Namibian representative at AFCON as a player and as a head coach as well. And apart from that, he's also the first coach who led the Brave Warriors to winning the Kosafa Cup in 2015, um, the Kosafa Plate section in 2016, and then in 2018, uh, you know, the, the Chan qualifications, the finals in Morocco, and then 2019, we were in Egypt, you know, by the pyramids. Um, that was the, the AFCON qualifications, and he was also leading the national team through uh, the two uh, Hage Gaingob Cup victories against Zimbabwe and Ghana. I mean, the bio can go on and on and on. But Mr. <laughs> Benetti, welcome to the show. Good morning and good morning to the listeners uh, and everyone on uh, social media. <laughs> How are you doing this morning? Yo, why did you have to wake me up so early, it's man? It's good. It's good for your health. Yes, for your on health. a Friday, yeah. Mm, apparently, it's very good. You know yeah. what else is good for your health? Apparently, a cold shower on a cold day. Like wow. It, it invigorates you, apparently. Apparently, I haven't a tried apparently it. Apparently, <laughs> now I'm not going to try it. <laughs> I, I was hoping you would try it and then you would tell me, like, yeah, no, 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 no. It, nah, it, it works. Nah, nah, it nah. Works. I it did works. not enough uh, ice baths when I was playing. <laughs> uh, that was, that was I crazy. Can imagine. Yeah. No, so you should be used to the cold by now. Um, just a little. Just a little. <laughs> just a little. I want to get back to those um, the days of, of you being a footballer, but let's just trace it back just a little yeah. bit. Your, your childhood years. What was that like for you? You're almost like uh, black and white, and a very yeah. um, contrasting uh, childhood I, I had. Um, I come from a very Christian folk background. Um, so we were very spiritual at home, you know, going to Sunday schools, must even prayer meeting on a Tuesday, mm -hmm. taking my mom on a Wednesday to church, and then Fridays, like youth meetings and stuff, and uh, Sunday, definitely you in church again. So for me, it was just church, church, church. And uh, But then uh, the other side of it, you know, growing up in Komasdal and uh, the area I'm from, you know, um, was kind of rough, you know, the streets, and... Uh, my, my brothers and my uh, parents tried to keep me away from that. Sometimes they succeeded, sometimes mm -hmm. not. But I think that brought me a little bit of um, the edge in terms of being street smart. Mm -hmm. So I was this uh, Christian that's street smart. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good combination to have. That's a good combination. Yeah. Have, have a little bit of Jesus love and a little hey. bit of hey. 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 Don't, don't mess up, with me. Pass up. She got no sin. <laughs> But what do you miss most about um, about that that childhood? Reminiscing now, looking back, says I learned one, two, three from from that time. Look from uh, my childhood time, like I I really miss the being nonchalant, being oh, just yeah. there, just floating, just not having responsibilities. <laughs> really, this thing of uh, growing up as a trap is yeah. so true, man. I just want to go back into time and just be and. Um, if I want to play football, I play football. If I want to go to church, I go to church. If I don't want to go, also don't mm -hmm. go. But now, you know, um, you have all these responsibilities. You're a parent, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you have to do all the things that's right. So for me, really, I miss uh, that part of my, of my childhood. Being a footballer now and entering into that sphere is, is hard. So I can only imagine for you growing up, how, yeah. how did you find yourself in the in this space? Well, um, at an early age, I realized that uh, I have to be different in order to make it in life. I just didn't have the wording for it like now. But I knew, look, if you want to make it uh, in life, whether it's uh, school, you need to be different. You need to do the opposite of what you see around you. And we had a lot of bad examples around us. You know, the whole uh, Chotsi culture, the whole Lokshan culture, the whole... Um, and I realized I had to be different. And um, that really carried me through to say that I need to finish my school. 
I uh, need to be a good uh, uh, son uh, for my parents. I need to be disciplined and all that, all that stuff. But basically, if I have to wrap it up, I, I decided at an early age I need I need to swim upstream. Ooh. I need to swim upstream. So you had already made up your mind. I made up my mind to say that I'm going to be different. If I see these guys uh, hanging around the shops, you know, doing uh, bad stuff, that's not me. Mm -hmm. If I see guys, um, you know, abusing alcohol, mm. that's not me. I'm not going to go down there because I can see. I Wait, have like, examples. Yeah, you know, you can you can see and you can tell the whole story until uh, the person ends in, in, in prison or the person dies or the person becomes an alcoholic. You could see it uh, because you have all these examples around you. And I was like, I'm not going to have... You're not going to any of that, person. any of that, yeah. So here's a young young lad from the dusty streets of Komazdal. Yeah. Well, now they're not so dusty anymore, nicely paved. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and he finds himself thrusted in a yeah. metropolitan city called Cape Town. Oh, yeah. Um, glitz, glamour and temptation. Sure. How did you manage to stay disciplined um, whilst oh, there? It was really tough, yeah. but um, uh, I, the fact that I chose football, already told me again, bro, you're swimming upstream again. Here you are. And I'm telling you, anyone that's swimming upstream, any, all my friends went to university, finished school, blah, 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 and I chose football. I had to go extra hard. Mm. Every day of my life, I had to go extra hard to make up, you know, because they're going to, they're going to university. What am I doing? So I have to go to the training uh, pitch and work on my craft and perfect my craft and be the best. And, and that, that's really the thing that... Uh, uh, push me every morning when I wake up to say that uh, everyone, my peers, they busy working hard in their careers. What are you doing? So whenever you have a passion, if you choose a passion job, make sure you go twice as hard mm. as a normal dude. Hey, whenever you have a passion, go twice as hard. Still speaking to coach uh, Ricardo Manetti, uh, he was saying that ah, it's not okay that I woke up in the morning it's so early and it's cold and Whitney Houston <laughs> agrees. It's not right, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ninety nine FM Royal Hustler. We're still talking to Ricardo Manetti. We uh, we talked about growing up in a, a very beautiful religious home that has structure and had, that had discipline, and how that discipline groomed him to be in Cape Town because he had already decided the kind of man that he was going to be. Didn't have the words for it, but he knew exactly who he wanted to be. Uh, and we ended things off there um, in Cape Town when his friends were in university, and he's like, "I'm I'm I'm going to make a go with this. I'm going to make a go of this." Uh, off air, we were talking about him being the the only player in from in Namibia being who was an Afcon player and an Afcon coach, yeah. right? So let's 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 dive into that. The from being a footballer to being a coach, the the weight of that. Did you find it to be challenging in a good way, or was it challenging in a way that you did not want to let the country down? Um, it was the last one. Mm. Did not want to let the country down. Uh, because coaching Namibia and coaching itself was never in my plans. Oh, really? Yeah, so uh, when I found myself in the situation, I turned down, the people don't know this, I turned down this job maybe two, three times oh. before I took it. So what? the third time, what was that change? Um, the coach ran away. <laughs> 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 the former coach ran away. So you didn't have a choice. Two, listen to this. Okay, tell me. Two days before we played the African champions, Nigeria. No. Yeah. Um, coach, wherever you are, I understand <laughs> why you, 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 you left me in the, in the hot seat just what? like that. I was just 37 or 36 at that time. And um, he just disappeared two days before the game, playing at home, Semnyama Stadium, <gasps> against a team that just won the AFCON. <gasps> I'm telling you. Oh, man. I forgot. I, I hit blank. From the announcement, from the day the president called me to... The, the, the actual president, president, president... The no, 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 the, the, okay. the president of uh, the Football Association, Mr. Still Munio. The yeah, yeah. Still the president, yes. and he was very intimidating with his voice. I can he said, imagine. Ricardo, how are you? I said, I'm cool, president. He said, you are going to coach the team on Tuesday. I'm like, um, um, he said, it's not, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. And uh, yeah. I was like, yes, yes, president, yes. And from that moment... Everything was just a blur. <laughs> <laughs> Until the Tuesday evening. And yes, I saw Nigeria. 
African champs with the big players. I mean, Obi, Obi Mikel, and I have these youngsters, Neville Shiweda, Dion Hotto, still a, a, a baby, basically. Shalulile was not even there that time in the, in the national team. Um, I, I remember Tangeni Shipao was there, was leading the attack. And we were just this inexperienced bunch <laughs> with an inexperienced coach. <laughs> Man, yo, yo that, that experience uh, shaped me. And I was like, okay, fine. Yeah. We drew the match 1-1. The best result against Nigeria, yes. by the way. That, yeah. Right? In the history. Yeah. So I was like, people said, no, you must take it. I'm like, okay, if I can take the heat against Nigeria, then let me, let me give it a shot. Let me try. And uh, that's how I was introduced into coaching the national team. Imagine. Yeah. And Scary stuff. How, how are you keeping up the momentum? What keeps you motivated on a, on a daily to do what you, what on you a, do? On, and, a, on and, a daily basis. Let me, let me answer two, three questions in it. I talked about passion. Mm. Now, if you choose passion, it's the right thing to do. But I said go extra hard, harder than your peers. Mm. Now, the thing that wakes me up in the morning is I've got three daughters. I don't have a, a son. I have, I've got three girls. And um, my aim, the thing that wakes me up in the morning, is no longer the passion of football. Mm. It's the passion for my kids. Oh. So now I'm going extra hard again. <laughs> for your beautiful so, family. Yeah, in order to leave a legacy for them. My kids don't understand who's Ricardo Manetti. Yeah, they just know. Daddy. Yeah, the firstborn knows. Yeah. The other two is they 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 too young to know yeah. and understand. They just know daddy and that's that's it. So yeah, and that's I, I, I I wanna leave a legacy for them mm -hmm. to say that when they get into their thirties, forties or twenties, whatever, mm -hmm. um, they know that my father left something for us to take further. And, and, and that's the thing that wakes me up in the morning. And finally, some life advice, some career advice for someone who's listening and says, I, I, I don't also have the words of who I want to become, yeah. but I want to become somebody. Yeah. The let's, words let's, from let's, let's, look, let's look at football because that's where, where I'm at. Mm. And uh, if, if you choose any, any youngster, parent, choosing football, please, I'll, I'll be very honest with you, don't just look at Shalulile, Ryan Nyambe, Dion Hoto, Shitembi, um, all these, all these big superstars. Um, a lot of kids choose football. A lot of parents choose football. It is a harsh. It's, it's the environment is tough. You need to be thick-skinned. Mm. You need to be tough mentally. You need to physically be tough. You need to challenge yourself. And if you can't do those things, and still on top of that, put the extra on top of what the coach has given you, then football is not for you. Please. Oh. Mm. Um, I'm not trying to kill dreams here. I'm just trying to, to open up yeah. and be realistic. So when you choose football and that's your passion, go extra hard, go twice as hard as what the uh, other industries are doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mr. Manetti, for coming. Yeah. We highly appreciate you and we'll definitely have you in again. Uh, clearly, there's a lot of stories that we need to hear from you. Yeah, man, this uh, 20 minutes was way too short. <laughs> very, very but anyway, short. thanks for having me. That was former footballer and coach, Mr. Ricardo Manetti. Royal Hustlers was proudly brought to you by Namdep Diamond Corporation.